This DAW264 is a method and format for video compression. The precise of converting video into a format that takes up less capacity, and it is an industry standard. The presentation will describe all the components in this figure. Before talking about the whole precise of encoding in this figure, let me give the definition of some concepts. So first, what is I-frame, P-frame, and B-frame? I-frame does not depend on any frames. It uses intra-prediction to encode the frame. P-frame and B-frame can use the previous encoded frame as reference, so it can use inter-prediction to encode. These two figures are generated by stream I and also use this bitstream analyzer to analyze. Red column represents I-frame, blue column represents B-frame. So we can find that P-frame uses the last three frames to do interprediction. I-frame does not depend on any frame. I have just mentioned two terms, interprediction and intraprediction. What do they mean? Interprediction from the prediction from the coded frame. It is used by P-frame and B-frame. Intraprediction from the uh, prediction from the previously coded part from the current frame. Let me give the brief introduction of the precise of encoding. This is the current frame which is waiting to be encoded. First, it needs to decide the frame type. If it is I-frame, it only uses intra-prediction. If it is P or B-frame, it uses intra-prediction or inter-prediction for each macro block, depending on the cost of inter-prediction and intra-prediction. Neither original data minus prediction is a residual data. It does DCT and quantitation for the residual data. As for the coding part, it does zigzag and also uses the prediction to reduce the size of some header information. For the result of DCT and quantization, it also do the reverse calculation for it. After that, it adds the prediction and the reverse calculations result together. This precise is like decoding. Intra-prediction uses the restricted data for the next intra-prediction. Before adding to the re reference list and being used by inter-prediction, it uses loop filter to reduce blocking distortion. I will talk about each component in detail. First, I want to talk about how does they decide the frame type. I use stream I to help me to analyze this bit stream. Red color represents I-frame, blue color represents B-frame, P-frame, green color represents B-frame. So how does it determine this? I-frame is determined by two factors. When there is no significant change of thing, it is determined by precise parameter GOP size. If GOP size is 100, every 100 of them will generate an I-frame. One significant change of thing is detected. It inserts an iframe instantly, regardless of the precise, precise GOP size. Let's see the video again. When the scene changes, it inserts an iframe. I think now you have a brief understanding how to decide the frame time. GOP is a precise parameter, but how to calculate the significant change of thing? For the current frame, it calculates the cost of inter and intra prediction for the whole frame. If the cost of intra prediction is less, it means that it cannot predict from the previous coded frame well, so it detects the change of thing, so that an iframe is inserted. Let's see the next slide. You may ask, in the precise of deciding the frame type, it does inter and intra prediction, but after that, it also does the intra and inter prediction. So what is the difference between them? The prediction in these components is only about deciding the frame type. It is not related to the final bit stream, so it needs to make this precise fast enough. The calculation of the prediction of the, this stage is based on lower resolution frames. For example, the original wise is 1920, and the, the wise of lower resolution frame is 960. So 
Ap apart from that, I think uh, it goes too far. Um, there's no, no, there's no selective partition modes. Originally, there are many partition modes, but both of them make the decision fast. Now let's talk about the intra prediction. It forms the prediction from the previously coded part from the current frame. Totally, it has nine prediction modes. For the first modes, for the first three modes, vertical, horizontal, DC. I draw this table to help you understand these modes. For the vertical modes, it uses the above values. For the horizontal mode, it uses the life values. The 16 by 16 micro block can be divided into four 8 by 8 blocks or 16 uh, 4 by 4 blocks. It calculates STTD for each partition mode and choose a mode with the smallest STTD. As for the cost of each partition block, it calculates STTD for all the prediction modes and choose a prediction mode with the smallest STT, STD. For example, in order to calculate STT for 4x4 partition mode, it needs to use 9 prediction modes for each 4x4 block and choose the prediction mode with the smallest STTD. Totally, it needs to calculate 16 times. The sum of them is the STTD of the 4x4 partition mode. Let's see an example in reality. This is a frame of the video. I also use stream I to help me analyze. Let's have a look at these two parts. The partition mode of the skies is uh, 16 by 16 and 8 by 8. For the detailed part, 16 by 16 and 8 by 8 partition mode cannot work well, so it uses 4 by 4 partition mode instead. You may wonder why does not all the partition modes use 4 by 4 mode? Because it needs more calculation resource. It needs to use 4 by 4 mode only when it really needs it. In order to avoid use the uh, small partition mode, when it calculates SCT, SCTD for 4x4 mode, it adds a small punishment. When it calculates SCTD for 4x4 mode, it adds a larger punishment. I have finished talking about the intra prediction for iframe. It comes to the prediction for P frame. It is more complicated because for each macro block, it needs to decide to use inter prediction or intra prediction. So it needs to compare the SCTD for inter and intra prediction and choose the one with the smallest SCTD. In the previous slides, I have talked about intra prediction. Next, let me talk about inter prediction. The important thing for inter prediction is about motion estimation. This is about selecting a prediction region and generating a prediction block. The offset between the position of the current partition and the prediction region is a motion vector. In order to make good motion estimation, the estimation is based on quarter pixel. The quarter pixel is generated by interpolation be between adjacent samples. It means that there are more pixels and there are more partition modes. It needs to calculate the STTD for each partition mode and choose a mode with the smallest STTD. Uh, let's see the selection of partition mode in the real video frame. At the right hand side of the frame, it is a sky, so there is not so much motion. Most of the partition modes are 16 by 16 partition mode. In the left hand side of the frame, there is a person riding a bicycle. In order to make the good prediction of the motion, most of the partition modes are 8x8 mode. Now we know how to do prediction. We use original frame minus prediction, then we get the residual data. What does residual data look like? Let's visualize it. From the video, we can find that the prediction is not accurate in where there is much motion, so the residual data in that part is larger. So let's say it again. When there is much motion, the prediction is not good. It leads to the larger residual data. 
um, the last video is uh, residual data and this part of video is the original video now it comes to the um, transform and quantization part for each 16 by 16 microblock it does 16 times 4 by 4 DCT transform for it from the figure we can find that there is uh, the other transform the second transform is applied to the lowest of DC frequency coefficients of the first transform. These DC values tend to be highly correlated and the second transform improves the coding performance. The DC coefficient block is further transformed using a 4x4 hard mod transform. Then it does quantization for 4x4 DC block and 16x16 AC block. This is a precise of forward transform and quantization, and uh, this is a precise of inverse transform and inverse quantization. It is very similar to the above uh, process. After transform and quantization, it needs to do uh, coding. First, it needs to encode the frame information uh, like partition mode and quantization value, but it not, does not directly encode them. In order to improve the coding performance, it uses prediction to reduce the bits. For iframe, it has three partition modes. It uses minimal value of the upper and left blocks partition mode to predict. If it is the same, it does not need to encode the mode. For preframe, it needs to predict the uh, motion vector. The prediction vector is medium vector of the upper and left blocks vector. It only needs to encode the difference, difference between the actual vector and prediction vector. As for encoding the quantization value, it only uh, encodes the difference between actual quantization and last block quantization. After finishing the precise of transform and quantization, it scans the coefficient block in, in a zigzag order, then encode it. We have finished this part. Let's talk about the loop filter. Before adding the restricted frame into the reference list, this needs to use loop filter. The loop the filter smooths block edges, edges, improving the appearance of decoded frame. This generally improves compression performance because the filtered image is more feasible reproduction of the original frame than a blocky and filtered image. From these two figures, we can find that this figure is more feasible than this figure. So that's all for the whole process of H.264 encoding. And thanks for listening.